Hello, I'm Nanette and welcome to Nanette Chocolates. And in today's demonstration, I shall be recapping the process of tempering chocolate, specifically to show you how to troubleshoot and get over the pitfalls that you might encounter along the way. So today, what I want to do is, in response to what people have asked me about, is show you a little bit more about tempering chocolate, but specifically what it looks like when it doesn't quite go to plan, and then what you can do about it as well. So if you remember, tempering chocolate is a glorified melting process. So what we are looking for is, as a result of this process, is a good shine, a nice snap, and when you're working with chocolate specifically, it's important that the chocolate contracts nicely away from whatever the surface that it's setting on. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. The glorified melting is all about bringing the chocolate to the melting point, which is about 45 degrees, and then bringing that temperature rapidly down to a working temperature again. And in that, you're controlling the structure of the chocolate such that it acquires all those qualities I've just described that we chocolatiers look for. So today's method again, I shall be just recapping on the microwave method. So I've got about, there's probably about a kilogram of chocolate in here, it's actually quite nice. Um, this is a 40% milk chocolate, boosted cocoa and reduced sugar. So it has lots of flavour to it and it's the chocolate of choice when I tend to use milk chocolate as well because of that flavour. So to melt it, as I said, I'm going to be using the microwave. So I should be putting it in the microwave to start off with just for a minute like this. Okay, so that's had a minute in the microwave and looking at the surface of it, there's probably not a great deal of change there. So I'm just going to stir that around a little bit and you can see in the middle there, it's starting to melt. I've got a bit of, uh, a bit of melted chocolate there as well. So I'm just stirring the buttons around to get rid of any hot spots and I'll put that back in the microwave again for a further minute. So this has now had a further minute in the microwave and if I stir that through you can see that everything is melted through in the bowl and it's lovely and smooth and shiny and glossy which is fantastic. And what I want to do to start with is just see how warm that is and generally if I hold the bowl in my hand I can feel that the warmth is slightly warmer than my body temperature and that's one of the beauties of using these plastic bowls because it allows you to do that. I know therefore that that chocolate is, is too warm to use and what I need to do is bring that working temperature down. So if you remember, a working temperature for milk chocolate is somewhere between 30 and 32 degrees centigrade, but more towards the 30 degrees centigrade. So the way to bring that temperature down is to add more buttons of chocolate, which I'll do here. So I'm just going to add a handful of chocolate buttons to this and then stirring those buttons through, what that does is to reduce the temperature of the molten bowl of chocolate. And that happens because as I'm stirring, the buttons that I've added will start to melt using the heat of that melted chocolate. Um, and in doing that, at the same time, that also reduces the temperature of the whole bowl of chocolate. So this is what tempering is all about. This is time, movement and temperature. So it's gonna take a few minutes for me to stir these buttons through, but then what we can do is start to test that whether or not the chocolate is properly tempered as well. So those buttons, you can start to see, they're less pronounced now. Still got a few lumps and bumps in there. I'll stir those through. So my temperature gun here, if you remember this, this is telling me when I shine the ray on my hand that my hand is about 23 degrees, which is really useful to know, isn't it? So instead, what I'll do is shine it onto the chocolate, but the chocolate, more importantly, is about 33 degrees. So I am just going to, if it's slightly too warm, I'm just going to dip my blade into the chocolate and just scrape off the surplus like that and just put that to one side and let it set. 
Whilst that's setting, I'll continue just moving the chocolate around like this, and that'll just keep helping with the tempering process. Whilst that's happening, what I want to do is show you what good and bad tempering looks like. So in front of me here, I have an example of shards of milk chocolate that I have not quite tempered properly before. This is what I poured out onto the desk, onto the table, before the chocolate was reduced properly in the temperature. Um, so what you'll find on the surface of here is a little bit of white graininess. So this is a typical effect that you'd find on chocolate that hasn't been tempered properly. And what it looks like is you've got a bit of fat. This is a fat bloom coming to the surface of the chocolate. And this is not the desired effect at all when you're tempering chocolate. To contrast that against this piece here, which has been tempered properly, you've got a nice gloss to the surface of the chocolate there. And you can see the difference between those two pieces of, of shards of milk chocolate. The other thing that is really important, as I was talking about before, is the contraction of the chocolate when it sets against the surface. So again, this is an example of the chocolate that, that hasn't been tempered properly that I've put into a mould for Easter eggs on this occasion. And you can see again that the chocolate hasn't been tempered properly. You can see these white marks, which again is the fat, the cocoa butter fat coming to the surface of the chocolate, which again is not something you're really wanting to have on the surface of your chocolate. But more importantly, there is no way that these shells are coming out, even if I'd be given a good whack on the table. That's not going anywhere. So that chocolate has not been tempered properly and that's evidenced by the fact that it hasn't contracted away from the surface of the mould that I have set it in. So again, compare that with this example here. So you can see the difference in the surface of those two examples of Easter egg shells. So this one here has been tempered properly. It's got a nice shine and gloss to the surface of the chocolate compared with this one that's got the white powdery cocoa butter surface to it. And again, more importantly, these shells will just simply come out like that and then they have a lovely shine to them too. So that will be ready for use and we'll come back to that in a different demonstration as well. So going back to the chocolate that I put on to one side here to set. So this, if you remember, was the chocolate that I put on the blade and just to test whether or not it's been tempered properly, what I would normally do is just put my finger on the surface and you can see from here that you can, you can see my fingerprints are left or finger marks are left on the surface of that chocolate. And that's a surefire way of identifying that the chocolate hasn't been tempered properly yet. It's been too warm. The crystal structure in the chocolate hasn't quite organized itself yet. So I need to do some more work to it. But I've been chatting and as that's been happening, this chocolate here in the bowl will have been continued to cool. It's about 31 degrees, 30 degrees. So it's about the right temperature, but I know that it hasn't got the right structure in it. So don't worry, the easiest way of dealing with this would be just to quickly pick up the temperature again of that bowl of chocolate and then redress it with new buttons of chocolate. So the easiest way of doing that, rather than putting it in the microwave, I'll bring the bowl to the hot air gun. So that will have picked up the temperature of the chocolate a little bit. It's got a lovely glossy shine to it, which is wonderful. Let's just see what the temperature is doing. Uh, this is again, it's, a, it's about 31 degrees. Uh, so it is about the right temperature. But what I want to do is just add just a little bit, just a, one or two little buttons here and just stir those through. And by doing that, stirring and just persuading the chocolate just to Get itself in order so to speak and this is this is about getting um, the structure of the chocolate in the way that we need it to be so that we can then work with it so that that's the, the, the best thing to do if you find that when you put your finger on the surface of your test blade you end up with your fingerprints left there just add a little more heat to the bowl a few more buttons to your mixture your chocolate and stir it through you might find on the other hand if the chocolate sets a lot faster than between three and five minutes uh, that is actually too solid to work with which is a different challenge entirely and the easiest way of dealing with that one is to simply get more warm air into your chocolate 
or just melt a little bit more and add that fully melted chocolate to your bowl and stir it through and you get the same effect. So what you're looking for eventually is for when you test your chocolate on your blade that you put your finger on the top of the surface of the, the chocolate on your blade that you come away with no finger marks and then you will end up with chocolate that when it's tempered and you put it in shards it looks like this it's got a lovely glossy shine to it it's got a nice clean snap like that it's got nice clean edges to it and then when you use it in a mold um, or work with it like this it retracts from the surface that you're using it on so you can work with it thank you very much for watching my demonstration i hope you've enjoyed it um, I would love to know what you think, so please get in touch, which you can do so via my website if you'd like to. I'd love to know also what you'd like me to show you in chocolate going forward. Just let me know your ideas. If you're watching me on YouTube, thank you. Please hit the notification bell and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.